Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to another class on linguistics. So, in the past couple of classes, we have been discussing about phrase structure grammar. So, if you need any clarity, just go to my channel and there is a recording of the live session we had on phrase structure grammar where I uh, am giving you an introduction to phrase structure grammar, uh, giving you a history uh, of phrase structure grammar, important people behind it. Uh, and then also explaining important terms like strings, PS rules, rewrite rules, nodes, etc. So before this class, I really advise you to go and watch um, that video and come back to me. And in this particular class, I would like to discuss the constituents of noun phrase. We already discussed that in live class, but just for clarity, I decided to record once again. Uh, so, welcome to this class on constituents of noun phrase. So, before I start telling you about the constituents of noun phrase, I would like to recap on certain PS rules or phrase structure rules. These are rewrite rules. And if you remember what rewrite rules are, these are substituting rules. So, that it's like an equation. So, you will substitute uh, the components on the left side of the equation with the components on the right side of the equation. So, that is what rewrite rules are all about. Let us look at some phrase structure rules or PS rules before going further with the class. So, first of all, the cardinal rule for phrase structure grammar is S is equal to NP plus VP. Sentence is equal to noun phrase plus verb phrase. So, this is the most important rule in phrase structure grammar. I hope you can see the board. And uh, the next rule is we are going to try and define noun phrase here. NP is equal to determiner plus noun. NP is equal to noun phrase is equal to determiner plus noun. Let's look at VP now. VP can be auxiliary plus verb. Auxiliary plus verb. But VP can also have more than that one possibility. VP can be um, verb plus noun phrase. VP can be verb plus noun phrase. It's just one of many possibilities, but the most important one you have to deal with this, this one. You have to learn it by heart. Verb can be auxiliary plus, sorry, verb phrase can be auxiliary plus verb. Let us look at PP now or prepositional phrase. Prepositional phrase always begins with a preposition. So, PP is preposition plus noun phrase. So, these are the most important uh, PS rules or, you know, phrase structure rules. S is equal to NP plus VP. NP is equal to determiner plus noun. VP is equal to auxiliary plus verb. And PP or prepositional phrase is equal to preposition plus noun phrase. So, let us now look at the constituents of noun phrase. There are many possibilities of what can constitute a noun phrase. It's not just determiner plus noun. There are many other possibilities of what can constitute a noun phrase. Let us look at each one of these. So, first of all, let us keep it simple. So, first possibility is noun phrase can be a noun. Noun phrase can be a noun. When I say noun, it can be a noun, a proper noun like a name. It can be a pronoun like he, she, they, etc. It can also be a demonstrative pronoun like this, these, those, that, etc. So, there are many possibilities when I say noun phrase is a noun. It can be a proper noun, it can be a pronoun or it can be a demonstrative pronoun. So, let us look at some examples. For example, John is lazy. 
here john is the noun phrase john is a simple proper noun here he is scared now write this see he he is a noun phrase which is a pronoun then these are flowers when I say this, these are demonstratives. So, that can also constitute a noun phrase. So, keeping it simple, noun phrase can be a noun or a pronoun or a demonstrative pronoun. The second possibility of a noun phrase is that a noun phrase can be a determiner plus noun. Noun phrase can be determiner plus noun. But how do you define determiner? Determiner can be many different things. Let us look at some possibilities of what can constitute a determiner. So, let us look at the possibilities of determiner now. So, first of all, determiner can be a restrictor. A restrictor. Restrictors are words like especially, only, merely, just, almost, particularly, even, etc. So, restrictors are words that restrict meaning. Words like especially, only, merely, just, almost, particularly, even, etc. So, let's look at the next possibility of a determiner. Determiner can be a Predeterminer. Determiner can be a predeterminer. Predeterminers, as the name suggests, these happen just before determiners. These are words like half, double, both, both, one third, twice, all of, etc. So, these can words like you know half the students or double the milk, both the girls, one third of the people, twice the amount, all of the women. Okay, uh, so it happens before determiners. Predeterminers, as the name suggests, occurs just before determiners in a sentence. Let's look at the third category of determiners. That is determiners themselves. Determiners can be of three types. First is, it can be articles. Articles like a, an and the. A, an and the. So, I'm not writing it because I don't have enough space there. And... Uh, the second category of determiners are demonstrators. Demonstrators. Demonstrators are this, that, these and those. This, that, these and those. Those are demonstrators. And the third category is possessives. Possessives. Possessives are words like my. Own, Rams. Now it shows possession. It, his, hers, theirs. You know, these words are words this, that uh, shows possession. So these are possessives. So there are three kinds of determiners. Articles A, An and The. Demonstratives this, that, these and those. And possessives like my, his, hers, theirs, own, Ram's, Sita's, etc. So, let's just rub this for now because we don't have much space over here. And uh, let's come to the fourth category of determiners. Those are ordinals. Ordinals. Ordinals are, number, are words which show number or order. Ordinals are words which show number or order. For example, these are words like first, 
the first second third last next these are words that show order okay ordinals are words which show order then let's look at the fifth category fifth category is quantifier quantifier as the name suggests shows quantity uh, these are words like many several few less etc okay. many several few less etc so these also come under determiner quantifiers means they show quantity uh, these are words like many several few less etc okay let's look at the next category adjective phrase adjective phrase adjective phrases are you know kind of like compound nouns but for adjectives uh, for example they they are you know an intensifier and an adjective together for example very good that is an adjective phrase very good and then we have a an adjective phrase called good looking these are adjective phrases okay an intensifier and an adjective or uh, an adjective and an adjective that can also come under adjective phrase and let's just look at the uh, next category seventh category is classifiers 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 are words uh, which actually puts a noun into a class classifiers are words which put a noun into a class for example when i say a city college a city college city is a classifier because they are putting we are putting the noun college into a class uh, it's not any college it's a city college so it is it belongs to a class of college likewise a summer dress it's not a winter dress it belongs to the class of summer dress also a leather purse it's not a cloth purse or anything it's a leather purse so the word leather is a classifier there so these are the possibilities of determiner. Determiner can be a restrictor like only, merely, just, almost, particularly, even, etc. It can be a predeterminer like half, double, both, one third, twice, all of, etc. Then it can be a determiner. Determiners are of three kinds. Articles A, and and the, demonstratives this, that, these and those. And possessives like my, hers, his, theirs, own, rams, etc. Then the fourth category of determiners are ordinals. You know, ordinals are words which denote order like first second third last next etc final these are all uh, ordinals then comes quantifiers quantifiers show quantity like words like many several few less etc then we have adjective phrases adjective phrases are either an intensifier and an adjective like very good and a co or a combination of adjectives like good looking then classifiers classifiers are words that you know categorizes nouns to a particular class words like a city college city is a classifier a leather purse leather is a classifier a summer dress summer is a classifier so we can use ps rules and rewrite this particular rule this way okay noun phrase can be i'll have to rub this uh, for clarity let's just rub all this okay so noun phrase can be let's just put double brackets double brackets mean uh, it can be 
any of these or any combination of these um, so whatever items come under the come within the double brackets double parenthesis it can mean that we can use any of these all of these or any combination of these so noun phrases restrictor plus predeterminer plus determiner plus ordinals plus quantifier plus adjective phrase plus classifiers plus noun so we can rewrite uh, this particular ps rule like this noun phrase can be restrictor plus predeterminer plus determiner plus ordinal plus quantifier plus adjective phrase plus classifier plus noun Let's now go to the third possibility of what can constitute a noun phrase. A noun phrase can be an NP plus PP. PP being prepositional phrase. An NP can be NP plus PP. NP can be NP plus prepositional phrase. So, let me give you an example of this. The man of the match. The man of the match. We can split it like this. The man of the match. The man is another NP, a noun phrase. Of the match is an example of a prepositional phrase because it begins with a preposition. So, you have to note that prepositional phrase always begins with a preposition okay so this is an example of np can be np plus prepositional phrase np is the man and pp is of the match and together the man of the match is also an np or a noun phrase so this is the third possibility of uh, what can constitute a noun phrase np is equal to np plus prepositional phrase so, the next possibility of what can constitute a noun phrase is NP can be NP plus relative clause. Relative clause. Let us look at what relative clause is. So, a relative clause, it has an adjectival function. It functions like an adjective. It will modify an NP. So, relative clause has an adjectival function and it modifies an NP. Let's look at an example. Then you will understand it better. Uh, the man who painted the last leaf. The man who painted the last leaf. This is an example. How do you split it? So, we can split it like this. The man. The man is an MP. And who painted the last leaf? That is the example of a relative clause. This is an example of a relative clause. Because it functions like an adjective. Okay. It gives you additional information about who the man is. Or uh, it uh, it actually modifies the NP. It modifies the NP, the man. Okay. Instead of saying uh, the painter man or the good man or the talented man, we get an additional information with a clause. It shows a relation. Who exactly is the man? So, the man who painted the last leaf. In this, who painted the last leaf is the relative clause. Another example is the boy who won the prize. So, relative clause usually begins with a WH uh, word like who, whom, where, the place where I was born. You know, uh, something like that. It usually begins with a WH word. So, that is the third possibility of a noun phrase. Noun phrase can be, sorry, it's a fourth possibility of a noun phrase. I'm sorry. It can be, NP can be NP plus relative clause. 
so the fifth possibility of what can constitute a noun phrase is a noun phrase can be simply a complement clause noun phrase can be a simply a complement clause complement clauses are you know uh, it's kind of like a relative clause it modifies np but a complement clause complements the noun or a noun phrase uh, it can actually modify a noun phrase it gives you additional information of what the noun is it gives you additional information of the noun for example let us look at this that he is generous is known to all so when we get a sentence like this we can we have to infer that we were already talking about him so this is an already implied noun we were already talking about this person but we are getting additional information using this phrase that he is generous we know a lot about this other guy this person they are talking about you know he's kind he is good looking you know he's rich but did you know that he is generous so that is the example of a complement clause it modifies an np it is kind of like relative clause in that respect it gives you additional information of a noun which already was being talked about so this is an example of np is equal to complement clause let us look at another example the news the news that he passed away shocked us this is a complete sentence the news that he passed away shocked us so in this particular sentence the noun phrase is the news that he passed away and shocked us is the verb phrase right verb phrase usually starts at the verb itself so this is the whole np but here the noun which we are talking about is the news news is the noun we are talking about but let us look at this particular <coughs> clause this gives us additional information of what exactly the news is the news is that he passed away so it complements or it modifies this noun phrase the news okay so np can be a complement clause that is the fifth possibility of what can constitute an np the sixth possibility of what can constitute an np is np can be determiner plus compound noun it is like the second rule but the only difference is it is a compound noun here compound noun is uh, a noun like the blackboard blackboard whiteboard mother in law etc are examples for example the blackboard a combination of nouns see that is an example of a compound noun this is a compound noun and this is a determiner np can be a determiner plus a compound noun another example is my mother in law mother in law is a compound noun and my is a determiner it's a possessive but we can say it's a determiner okay so this is a sixth possibility of what can constitute a noun phrase a noun phrase can be a determiner plus compound noun so finally these are the six possibilities of what can constitute a noun phrase so a noun phrase can be a noun noun being it can be a noun a pronoun or a demonstrative pronoun the second rule is np is equal to determiner plus noun and we learned about the seven different possibilities of what can constitute a determiner already the third possibility is np is equal to np plus pp or prepositional phrase uh, the example was the man of the match 
And fourth possibility is NP can be NP plus relative clause. For example, a word, a phrase like uh, NP like uh, the man who painted the last leaf. And then um, NP can be a complement clause like that he is generous is known to all. And finally, the sixth rule is NP can be determiner plus compound noun like my mother-in-law the whiteboard or the blackboard etc so these are the six possibilities of what can constitute a noun phrase so i hope this class was beneficial for you uh, just take down everything uh, maintain your own notes that's the only way you can learn linguistics really well from your own handwriting rather than printed out notes so i hope once again that this was beneficial for you keep learning Thank you so much for listening and watching the video till the end. Have a nice day. Bye.